Hello and welcome back to DC to Daylight. My name is Derek and if you've been following along, here we typically do a theory based video then follow up with a video on a small application that demonstrates that theory in the real world. Last time I showed you how to program the Nordic Semiconductor NRF 5340 audio dev kit which makes use of Bluetooth streaming audio alongside the super efficient LC3 codec. Now I struggled for a bit trying to think of an interesting application. Of course a stereo Bluetooth speaker immediately comes to mind and that would be a wonderful thing to tie into my stereo system here in the office. But unfortunately I only have one gateway that acts as the source and one that acts as a receiver or headset device so no stereo. However with Halloween right around the corner at least at the time I'm planning this all out you'll see it much later I thought it would be fun to use these devices to scare innocent kids as they come up to the house and do their trick or treat thing. So let's get right into scaring people with the help of Bluetooth Low Energy. Come get a cookie. <laughs> so essentially here's what I want to do. I want to use several different sound effects at the touch of a button so that requires some software in the computer. Now I'm running Ubuntu Linux and Caster Soundboard, which allows us to bind a particular sound effect to whatever key we specify. With that in place, we can connect our gateway device to the USB port and switch the audio output from default to the NRF5340 DK digital audio output. And that's really it from the transmitting side. On the receiving side, I'd like everything to be battery powered. We're lucky in that the folks at Nordic Semiconductor provided everything we need to run the dev kit off a of battery, so we're good there. The streamed audio is output to the headphone jack. Of course, that's not loud enough to scare anything or anyone, so I'm gonna need to use an audio power amplifier to kick it up a notch. So I'm gonna run this power amp from a 12 volt, 12 amp a battery that I typically use to run my ham radio gear remotely. So I know it should run for a significant amount of time. But to get the most out of it, I'm gonna use a Class D amplifier which offers high efficiency, trading off some audio quality, which is inherent in Class D amps. Anyway, the amplifier chip is the 20 watt Maxim MAX9744. The modularized PCB comes from Adafruit. The link to this board is down in the description. Now this board has two channels intended for stereo operation. Obviously mono is good enough for what we're doing today, so I'm going to bridge the left and right channels at the input and use two speakers at the output. Honestly, I don't know if this amplifier allows one to bridge the output in order to use a single speaker, but with Halloween only a couple of days away, I can't afford to smoke this thing, so I'm just gonna connect two independent speakers. Okay, so on the receiving side, we have our audio dev kit. The great thing about this is it has a power management IC, so it controls charging over the USB port over here. And they gave us quite a hefty battery to run this thing from, so it's as simple as just turning it on, and it'll synchronize with the transmitter, okay? And uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna connect this up. So this is a power amplifier we already talked about. The line level uh, audio signal comes in through this terminal. 12 volts needs to be supplied uh, from this guy to get the full 20 watts out per channel. And we have uh, left and right channels here for the speakers. This is a class D amplifier, so it sends a pulsed uh, output and we need the resistance of the speaker to reconstruct uh, those pulses into an actual audible signal again. So we need the resistance or the impedance of the speaker in order to do that. Um, I have two speakers that I'm going to use. One I use for ham radio, that's this Kenwood one, this is 40 watts, um, so that would be fine. However, the second speaker that I have here, uh, I'm not sure the uh, power rating of this guy, so we're going to combine them together. Uh, this is the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery that I'm going to use, super lightweight, 12 volts, 12 amp hours, and it uses Anderson power poles as the uh, connector, so that's how these guys go together. I'm still on the fence, but uh, a lot of people in the ham radio community and I think the solar community use these Anderson power poles as well. So, But let's start putting this together. You might be asking why I wear gloves in a lot of my videos. And I don't particularly like looking at people's fingers and cuticles. So I guess I kind of feel, why should I force people to look at mine? Okay, it should work. Now we need to connect our speakers. This is one channel. This isn't a hi-fi application, so I don't really care about the polarity or phasing. The good thing about this black speaker is that I can point it up. So if I put it on the ground, I can have it facing people. And my understanding is that this potentiometer we soldered on, if it's all the way uh, clockwise, then uh, it's the loudest. So we want it to be the loudest possible. All right, so let's connect our battery. I heard a little click. Let's turn this on and see if we can get some scary sounds coming out of the speaker. So let's go through some of these sound effects. Number one, <laughs> so I should be able to play the other sound effects in parallel. So let's go for number two. Here's the <laughs> there we 
go. Let's turn that off. Count Dracula. Okay, I'm not sure why I need to press it twice. Uh, Scarecrow. All right, that's cool. Werewolf. That'll work. Ghostly breath. Yeah, it's not that scary. Knock, knock. Igor. <laughs> so that's about it. I think I'm just gonna tape all this stuff together. I've got this black felt that I'm gonna cover the whole thing in um, so nobody sees it and just throw it in the bushes um, and uh, we should be good to go. So I'm gonna finish wrapping this up. We'll get all the computer and everything set up downstairs uh, in front of the front door. So this should be a suitable spot. Right there like that. Just cover it. That'll be fine at night. Perfect. This is Command Central where we're gonna scare everybody. So here's the computer. I'm using a caster soundboard and I've got all my sound effects ready to go up here. I've got a camera here that we're gonna use to record what's going on here at the desk. I've got OBS running here. And uh, it's recording that camera and this webcam right here. There's the webcam outside. I've got a shotgun mic over here that's going to pick up hopefully some reactions. And that's about it. So let's get set up. Oh, oh, yeah, she does. Save her with me. <laughs> oh, good, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Nobody I, I, even flinched. No, I looked, I looked. It kind of got me. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That, that's very sweet. Yeah, thank you. that's awesome. Well, that's it for this episode. Even though we set off with two simple Bluetooth low energy devices, I think something cool came out of it. And I know we could have used a simple Bluetooth speaker, but using this dev board, we have uh, additional IO that could be utilized if say we wanted to add a motion sensor to trigger these sound effects and fully automate this thing. Anyway, that's a project for next year. Overall, I was happy with the way the project turned out. The audio DKs worked flawlessly and the Class D amplifier was very loud and had no problem projecting the sound. Unfortunately, there weren't many trick-or-treaters this year and there were a lot of little kids in the mix and I didn't really want to scare them so I didn't get as many reactions as I wanted. But overall, yeah, this project was a lot of fun. Now, I want to hear what kind of Halloween projects you've worked on in the past, so hit me up down in the comments or even better over at the community. The link is down below. That's it for me. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.